The distance golfers hit their drives has long been a discussion on driving ranges and in clubhouses throughout the world. And thanks to launch monitors in the modern game, terms like driver swing speed, or club head speed as it is also called, have now been added to the conversations on distance, as players compare not only how many yards their drives are going, but also how fast they are swinging their driver. And the simple reason for that is that club stroke swing speed is the key factor for determining a golfer's potential distance, and the more of it you have, the more chance you have of hitting long drives. Indeed, so important is swing speed in the modern game that specific training equipment and programs are now available to help you with increasing it. So in this video, we take a look at the stats to answer how far you should drive the ball with your swing speed, how much of it you need to hit the key distance milestones of 200, 250 and the magical 300 yard mark, and why it is vital you don't focus on your driver's swing speed number in isolation, otherwise you'll waste some of that hard earned speed. Welcome back to the Golfing Focus channel everybody, and as any golfer knows, whatever their standard or length of time playing the game, the distance players hit their drives has long been a key discussion point. And thanks to technology, golfers are now readily aware of how more and more swing speed can help them hit the ball further and score better. In short, the more of it you have, the further you should hit the ball, and according to Trackman, adding one mile an hour of driver swing speed can increase your driving distance by up to three yards. As a result, it is inevitable that regular golfers will wonder how fast their own swing speeds are and how far their drive should go with them. And according to one of the leading experts on swing speed training, Jacob Bowden, average male golfers drive the ball about 2.2 yards per mile an hour of driver club head speed. Average women golfers achieve 2.14 yards per mile an hour, while PGA and LPGA Tour pros average 2.59 and 2.64 yards per mile an hour respectively. A sole focus on driver swing speed, or any other individual launch monitor driver metric for that matter however, is not the ideal approach if we are truly going to answer the question completely of how far 85, 90, 95, 100, 105 mile an hour etc driver swing speed should go. It is also far from the ideal if you are looking to hit the ball as far as you can. Because if you chase driver swing speed alone without understanding how it plays into the multiple factors that determine the actual distance you hit the ball, you are likely going to be leaving some yards on the table. When it comes to driver swing speed, the real question is not really how far you should hit your drive based on your swing speed, but how far you could drive the ball based on it. Driver swing speed is only the key factor for determining a golfer's potential distance, but it is ball speed, the speed of the golf ball immediately after impact, that is the single biggest factor in determining how far a golf ball actually carries. And ball speed, together with launch angle and spin rate, often referred to together as a drive's launch conditions, are the three key factors that determine how far you drive the ball. Where driver swing speed comes into the equation is that in combination with attack angle at impact, it helps to determine the optimal mix of these three key factors. Ball speed, launch angle, spin rate, that determine driver distance. This may sound overly complicated, but essentially what it means is that driving distance is dictated by a golfer's ability to convert club head speed into ball speed. In other words, how close they can strike the ball to the sweet spot, while getting the ball up in the air as quickly as possible at the best angle and without much spin in it. So as we can see, while driver swing speed is an important part of the distance picture, it is not the only part and in distance terms is a supporting element of the equation that really determines how far you could drive the ball. For example, if we simply look at the strike of a drive, the key to energy transfer from the club to the ball, experiments easily show the effect of mishits. In a robot testing experiment carried out by golf technology expert Gene Parenti of Golf Laboratories with Golf.com, he discovered that if you strike the ball on the lower third of the club face, or anywhere past one inch off centre, you will lose up to 8 yards of distance, even if you increased your driver swing speed from 95 to 105 miles an hour. Parenti's tests also found that you will gain 13 yards with that same swing speed increase if you strike the ball both times in the centre of the driver club face, making it obvious how increased swing speed is not rewarded if it is not married with a decent strike. That is principally why average male golfers drive the ball only approximately 2.29 yards per miles an hour of driver swing speed, 
compared to the 2.59 yards per miles an hour PGA Tour pros achieve on average and the 2.64 yards per miles an hour the top women players on the LPGA Tour get. Because the best pros in the world strike the ball far, far, far more consistently near the sweet spot of the driver and so don't waste nearly as much of the club head speed they generate as amateur golfers do. And if we now turn to a golfer's attack angle with their driver, we will see why there has to be a range of distances to answer the question of how far an 85, 90, 95, 100, 105 mile an hour etc driver swing speed should go. Players with slower swing speeds for example need a higher launch angle as a result of there being less loft and drag in the ball at lower speeds, while golfers with faster clubhead speeds need to be aiming for a launch angle that is much lower to maximise both carry and total distance. So when a golfer has a negative angle of attack, more loft is required to launch the ball high. But if you increase the loft without changing the attack angle, you generate more spin and that reduces the distance you hit the ball. To maximise both carry and total distance with your driver therefore, you should ideally have a positive angle of attack and as the attack angle increases, the optimal launch and spin for the golfer changes. This then results in variances in ball speed which ultimately is the key determinant of distance. All of which in short means that if you want to know how far you could rather than should hit your driver with your swing speed, you need to know more information than that to get the correct answer. You need to know your attack angle and launch conditions also, otherwise you're not going to get the complete picture. To give you a good guide however of the carry and total distances you should hit your driver with your swing speed, we have pulled together data from Trackman, one of the leading launch monitor makers for golfers with swing speeds from 75 to 120 miles an hour and with very different attack angles from minus 0.5 degrees to plus 0.5 degrees. So as we can see, a swing speed of close to 95 miles an hour is needed to hit a total distance of 250 yards, but a club head speed of around 103 miles an hour is required to carry the ball the same distance, according to Trapman. By comparison, driver club head speeds of close to 110 miles an hour are needed to drive a total of 300 yards, while to carry the ball that distance, an extra 7 miles an hour of swing speed would be needed, together with these same additional elements. Always, always, always remember, however, these distances are based on these shots being hit with the optimal ball speeds, launch angles and spin rates for these driver swing speeds, and specific angles of attack, so if you don't fall into them, you're likely falling outside those numbers too. The key point of all this though is simply to bear in mind that while increasing your swing speed is a definite pathway to hitting the ball further off the tee, unless you are doing it in combination with other factors that matter, you will likely not be benefiting from it. Or worse, you may actually be losing distance in spite of it. The good news however is that if you are not yet swinging at the driver swing speed you would like to get to the driver distance you are aiming for, but are determined to get there, there are plenty of fitness and training programs focused on increasing golfer swing speeds now readily available. We have put a couple of links to ones Golfing Focus is affiliated with in the description and if you plan to use one it would be a great support to the channel if you could use one of them. Just always keep in mind that the goal of extra driver club head speed can never be the sole focus. And remember too, None of these swing speed targets make any mention of a key distant factor over which none of us have any control whatsoever, the weather. So that's it for our look at the question of how far your driver swing speed should go. As ever and most importantly we hope you're enjoying your golf and if you like this video you know what to do with those boxes on the screen and we'll see you over there shortly.